তোমার যে শুধু ভক্ত তোমাতে সে অনুরক্ত তোমার যে বারে কো দেখি তে তো শিলাকার শিবৈব সৈতি ও না সুপ্ত না 
নহীনো মজনি প্রবীণ বিষয়ে অন্তরি বাহিরে নিষ্কপট সোজা নিচলীড়া অনুরক্ত অন্তরি বাহিরে নিষ্কপট সোজা নিচলীড়া অনুরক্ত কনিষ্ঠ মধ্যম উত্তম প্রভেদে বৈষ্ণব ত্রিবিধ মধ্যম উত্তম প্রভেদে অনিষ্ঠে আদর মধ্যমে প্রণতি উত্তমে শুশ্রূষা শুনি কনিষ্ঠে আদর মধ্যমে প্রণতি উত্তমে শুশ্রূষা And Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj's classes used to be like two hours, two and a half hours, three hours, going from eight o'clock in the morning up to noon. <laughs> and it was fascinating for me for some, to see this culture of having bhajans for like 30 minutes and glorification of Srimad Bhagavatam for like 45 minutes and then coming to the wars and then opening up the purport line by line for like two hours. And then, then after that, the royal staircase conversations <laughs> down the steps. So it was fascinating that someone had so much to speak about Krishna. Asakti stat guna kyane priti stat vasati sthali as one of the symptoms of Bhava Bhakti. So conceptions about Nityananda Prabhu as a volcano of love. Conceptions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu being Bhakta Avatar. Coming to taste so many beautiful things like the, the whole concept of the green mango and the yellow mango. I had never heard of these things. How Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was the most juicy, most nectarian uh, <laughs> fruit of Godhead. Netrotsav, another, another beautiful concept that I heard only from Srila Gaurgopi the Maharaj. That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu coming in front of Jagannath and the eyes meeting, eye to eye union. This, this was something that I had never thought of, never heard of. Um, and another thing about uh, Leela Purushottam, Mariada Purushottam and Prema Purushottam. These terms, again, I heard from Srila Gaurgopi the Maharaj in his tapes. And how wonderfully he would like um, navigate from one chapter of one canto to another chapter of another canto with references, pulling off out of nowhere. And then singing Vaishnav bhajans and then quoting them and also ripping off the disciples in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Out of so much affection, I, I always saw affection of Guru Tattva coming. In fact, one last story before I wrap up. In, in Atlanta, one senior devotee was once mentioning that he was uh, part of the Mayapur Gurukul. And Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj was his teacher. And he somehow as a child had, uh, you know, this nature of being a little frivolous. So he would make fun of Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj. He would make fun of Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj's accent and his way of talking and singing and walking and expressions and gestures. And Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj would tolerate because he was a kid. But then he mentioned to me something very sweet. He said, one day as I was walking and playing around, Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj called me and said, Baba, come here. So then he, he said, offer obeisances to me and touch my feet. <laughs> so he was standing with folded palms and Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj said, you make fun of Vaishnav, you will get Vaishnav Aparat. Maya will hold you by the throat and push you into another mother's womb. I can forgive you, Baba. You offer obeisances, I will forgive you. And then Maya will not touch you. So, and then he offered obeisances and Gorgobin the Maharaj blessed him. So, and laughed and, and blessed him. So, what I see there is so much affection. It's like a father teaching the child to offer obeisances to the mother and the mother teaching the child to offer obeisances to the father, you know. So, it was Gorgobin the Maharaj's uh, sweet mood. So, in this way, so many beautiful things that uh, I personally uh, want to offer as flowers of gratitude, stringing them to a garland at the lotus feet of Srila Gorgobin the Maharaj. So, to his divine grace, Srila Gorgobin the Maharaj, yeah. I sell myself as a slave, lifetime after lifetime, for how much his vani has given me. I have never been able to see his form through my eyes or be the recipient of his glance. But I think his classes, his Nityananda Kirtans, three, three hour Kirtans, Doya Koro More Nitai, Doya Koro More, Agatira Gati Nitai, Sadhu Loka Bole. All of these things like move in my consciousness when I think of Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj, like rocking and rolling on that Vyasasan, roaring like a lion. <laughs> so, Govinda Maharaj for me reminded me of Prabhupada a lot. <laughs> and that was something that I appreciated that Krishna had sent us. Another, what we say, Prabhupada in one sense. Someone who, was, who knew the philosophy, who lived it each moment, who grew up in it, who, who preached it. Yeah. It was a real, for, I think for the society, it was a great opportunity to really grow in our Krishna consciousness by his association. And I'm sure somebody will speak about his disappearance, which really is, is indicated of his spiritual you know, power, his spiritual elevation. That was really how he disappeared. I can't really speak about it. I'm not qualified to. But I think that is... Uh, really indicated of his spiritual stature.
start, started speaking about the Bhuvaneshwar Temple. He started speaking about many of the obstacles he confronted in establishing the Bhuvaneshwar Temple. He spoke about certain personalities that somehow didn't fully seem to accept that Prabhupada's words and his desire for the Bhuvaneshwar Temple were sufficient in of themselves to see that it would manifest. And he started speaking about his own firm conviction about the instructions that Srila Prabhupada had given to him. And uh, he spoke a lot about this project and then how it all manifested because of Srila Prabhupada's desire, taking very humble back seat in this description with me by trying to prove to me that everything there is in Srila Prabhupada's words and the disciples should simply have deep faith in those words. And if the desire spiritual master is for it to manifest, then it will manifest. And we have to have that faith. And that was his, his theme in relationship to the Bhuvaneshwar project. And then he also began speaking to me at one point about, um, about Srila Prabhupada's books, his teachings, his instructions. And uh, he, could, he spoke to me in a way saying that he was oftentimes subjected to hearing words spoken about Srila Prabhupada that were very painful for him. Especially, he was saying how there sometimes people uh, would say that Srila Prabhupada didn't give us everything. And therefore, it was very necessary to understand that uh, because Srila Prabhupada hadn't given us everything, that uh, we were somehow deficient. And Gorgo Vindaraj, while he was explaining this to me, uh, he choked and uh, he couldn't speak. And uh, he actually folded his palms with tears and his eyes were so moist. And he just said with in a shaking voice, he said, forgive me, Maharaj, I cannot speak. And he stopped and just sat there, tears coming from his eyes, because I could see how pained he was at the thought that anyone would think that way. And uh, at some point, I don't know how long it went after he begged forgiveness to me for not being able to speak, but he started speaking again. And he came back like a lion and tried to emphasize the point that Srila Prabhupada gave us everything. He picked up Chaitanya Charitamrita. He held the book facing me, opened it up. He was hold, pointing to the verse in the book. And then he said, Maharaj, it's everything is there, everything. And he was speaking so strongly. And he said, we have to become, as he oftentimes said, we have to become very expert in mining to seeing how Srila Prabhupada had given us everything in his books and his instructions. And then he began speaking about how the spiritual master continues to instruct the disciple even after he departs. And he spoke, as you mentioned, Giriraj Maharaj mentioned, he spoke about how the spiritual master continues to instruct and care for his disciple through Shastras, as he was speaking about the books. And also, he said, through the mouths of sadhus and Vaishnavas. And in this way, he personally takes care of their spiritual life of anyone who's very eager to receive those instructions from their guru. And as he was speaking, I've reflected on this before. Gorgo Maharaj, I didn't take it that he was speaking to me by telling me, don't you know, Naranjana Swami Prabhupada is speaking to you now? I, I didn't take it that that was his mood at all. I took it that he was speaking from very deep realization. And as I was sitting there, obviously what entered my heart was Prabhupada speaking to me. And for me, that in itself was very much a, a catalyst. And it was very transformational as to the potency of Guru and his relationship with his disciple. Because I was able to get a glimpse, just a glimpse of the potency of the spiritual master in his relationship with his disciple and the transparency of Srila Guru Govinda Maharaj and that eternal message, which he was holding very fast to in his communication to me. It is an eternal spiritual principle and no doubt exists in my mind whatsoever that eternal spiritual principle is possible for those who have faith like he had in the words of his spiritual master, my spiritual master, and the, for those who gave, and one thing that actually became apparent to me after that meeting with him, gave every fiber of his existence and service to his spiritual master. So much to the point that after that meeting with him, that if anybody would even suggest anything of any sort, that Gorgo Govinda Maharaj was not Srila Prabhupada's man, I became like the ferocious lion <laughs> to demonstrate how there was no doubt in my mind <laughs> of how every fiber of his existence was a full dedication, his service to our Guru Maharaj. I'm a disciple of Srila Prabhupada. 
and the godbrother of Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj. Very gratefully so, to be considered in the same company, in the same spiritual family, as an advanced devotee, an actually advanced devotee, who is like, in my mind, the flower in the forest that scents the whole forest. One pure Vaishnav, who is steeped in the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, remembering them, explaining them, and enacting them, changes the whole world. And when Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj humbly came into the assembly of ISKCON devotees and approached Srila Prabhupada, of course, Srila Prabhupada recognized his stature uh, amidst so many others who were sincere but did not have his pedigree, which is that he's a pure Vaishnav from birth. Gorgovinda Maharaj would sit and uh, give Bhagavatam lectures, the likes of which I'd never heard, I had never heard before. And watching him was watching uh, Prasadam. Uh, he was at the mercy of the Lord incarnate. On this uh, divine day of his uh, celebrating his life, I am praying that I can always remember him and follow in his footsteps by seeing his example and taking it up in my own life. And may all his followers all over the world be glorified on this day for serving him and spreading his message all over the world. Thank you very, very much for allowing me just to say a few words about this most exalted Vaishnav and one who has changed the world just by his walking on the planet Earth. I had personally with Srila Gorbhavinda Maharaj on that first meeting, and it was the same experience I had in all the other meetings I had over the years. Um, it was mystical. <laughs> He, he gave so much appreciation and encouragement to me that he really made me feel that my existence in ISKCON, my being a disciple of Srila Prabhupada in the service I was rendering was so very important. Um, when we feel that what we're doing is making a difference and important, it is a great um, empowering experience. And he made me feel so important through his appreciative, encouraging words. But simultaneously, his example, his humility, his knowledge of the scriptures, his realizations of Krishna consciousness, and ultimately his pure unalloyed love for Sri Sri Radha Govinda Dev, it made me feel totally insignificant. Now, when both of these um, experiences are happening simultaneously in the heart, it's, it's wonderful. He's simultaneously making me feel so important and totally unqualified and insignificant. Gorgobana Maharaj's surrender was complete and absolute on all levels, from the core of his heart to his every word and his every action. Um, I saw the austere conditions he was living in in 1982 and it was far more austere previous to that. There was very little help that anyone was given. He never complained. With total gratitude and surrender, whatever the results were, however people treated him, he was surrendered to fulfilling Srila Prabhupada's desires. And he would tell me how it was so important to him in his love and surrender to Srila Prabhupada that the people of the world, in the present and for all time to come, should have total faith that Srila Prabhupada has given and is giving us everything. That there is no shortcoming, there is no lack of, of the highest realizations of Prema Bhakti in Srila Prabhupada's teachings, Srila Prabhupada's books. Gorgobinda, Gorgobinda Maharaj would often cite this verse of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Trinarapi suni chena taruar eva sahishnana amani namana dena kiritaniya sadahari. Gorgobinda Swami Maharaj he lived that verse. For the rest of us, we're trying to practice that verse um, in order to please our Guru and Krishna. For Srila Gorgovinda Swami Maharaj, the manifestation of the of the truth of that verse was simply simply an outpouring of his love for Krishna. Gorgovinda Maharaj really revealed to our movement, and he's revealing to the whole world the great treasure of significance of the eternal leela of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri. When 
I read some of the beautiful books that um, Madhavananda Prabhu and, and your god brothers and god sisters have published of Gorgovinda Maharaja's talks. We could feel. We could feel this experience that Gorgovinda Maharaj, when he's speaking, his heart, his soul is in the Gambira, along with Ramananda Rai and Swarupamadharma Goswami and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's revealing the feelings, the lessons, the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu within that most intimate part of his life. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spent almost 12 years of his life in the Gambira, <laughs> tasting the sweetness of Sri Radha's love. Um, he gave us, on behalf of Srila Prabhupada, he gave us the essence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings. And I could always feel Srila Prabhupada's um, inconceivable appreciation and empowerment toward Gorgovinda Swami Maharaj. Um, Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj, in every sense, was truly an Acharya. Um, how he was so learned that every single word he spoke, he could support with our Vaishnava scriptures and Vedic evidence. And Sharanagati, when he would give his lectures, it was simultaneously so sweet and it was like electrifying, like a thunderbolt sometimes. And it had the effect of awakening our devotional service. And when he would sing the beautiful songs, he would spontaneously, as he was giving classes, spontaneously he would like he would like erupt with with enthusiasm and chant um Narutam Das Thakur's bhajans or Bhakti Vinod Thakur's bhajans or Lochan Das Thakur's bhajans or or verses from Sri Chaitanya Charitam Rita, Srimad Bhagavatam. Um he he was an embodiment of spontaneous love, yet always humble, always respectful, even in his most courageous times. He his he embodied Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's spirit, and that was that was how he surrendered his life to Sri Prabhupada. It was just extraordinary, and and each and every one of us is unlimitedly fortunate that either directly or indirectly, we could be in the presence of such a, a pure, empowered acharya in the service of Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> Mercy, Dayar, Avadhi. Huh? We understand.